What's going on guys? I am Ghosty Russ and I am back to talk about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. According to the wiki, this had a budget of 15 million and it hit at the box office for 39.4 million, which I don't know if that's good or bad to be completely honest, but they more than doubled the movie budget, so I think that's a win. And honestly, with this movie, they're just gonna have to take a win as a win any way you can get it. There's no Spy Kids in this movie, so I guess that's also a win. Now, in this 2009 sequel to the 2007, there's a lot of things that have changed, and honestly, not a lot of them make sense. There are a lot of things about this movie that leave me scratching my head, to be completely honest. I mean, the 2007 movie, while different than the original 1978 film, was very exciting and it was honestly a really good remake. Like I said, I believe that it is the best horror remake in modern horror. But when it comes to a sequel, this movie is nowhere near the level of the first 2007 film. I do know that Rob Zombie had some issues with the Weinstein Company. which, you know, kind of expected. I will say that I have heard that Rob Zombie actually used Halloween 2 as a way to get out of his three film contract. And there was an announced sequel to part two that was gonna be called Halloween 3D that was set to release in 2010. So that was a lie. But luckily, that film was cancelled. So, we have Rob Zombie, who is a great filmmaker. We have Michael Myers and the Halloween franchise, which in of itself is a box office attraction. So where did it go wrong? So, like last time, I've got some pros and cons that I want to go over, and honestly, I'm just going to be giving more of my opinion. Uh, the last video actually did really well and it really makes me happy because I'm trying to get into making more videos so I hope you guys like these. Um, I definitely plan to do more especially with the Halloween stuff. Alright guys so I do have some pros and cons. I'm going to be starting off with the pros because this list is much shorter than the cons. So the first pro is pretty simple and actually it was mentioned in my other previous video. Um, I really do like how the mask has aged. Um, I do like that it progressively falls apart and gets worse and worse as this film progresses. I mean, I think at one point in this film you actually see part of it get ripped off and I think that that is actually really cool. Honestly, I do think it's a nice touch and it adds a little bit of wear and tear to Michael as the film progresses and it's something that isn't really seen a lot in the franchise. The mask really doesn't get damaged per se in a lot of the other films. So on to number two in the pros. So the opening of the movie is this really intense dream sequence. Honestly the whole dream sequence is honestly amazing. It's so intense and it's so brutal. The whole kind of sequence of Lori escaping the hospital, trying to escape Michael, and then getting in the security shack and having nowhere to go. And Michael's literally just Kool-Aid manning it through all the fucking walls. It's violent and I love it. And then Lori wakes up, and that is where we will start our cons. So after the really dope dream sequence, the movie just takes a really steep dive for absolutely no reason. 
and the movie gets really fucking weird. Now, understandably so, Lori has some issues after the events of the 2007 film, but we find her living with Sheriff Brackett and Annie, who also survived the events of the 2007 film. And both of them, while they have definitely been through a lot, and while Annie's very sympathetic towards Lori, seem relatively okay, and it seems like they've kind of moved on from the situation. We also catch up with Dr. Loomis, who is even more of an asshole in this film. I want to shoot you for your greedy fucking book. I want to shoot you so bad. I want to shoot him. I want to shoot him! And we just see how vain he really has become as an author. Honestly, I don't mind this version of Loomis as much as some people. I think it does add to the story. However, just they kind of turn Loomis into an overall asshole. Now, I didn't talk about the scene where we see Michael surviving the events of the 2007 film, which it was a weird cow scene. Um, I really don't want to talk about that scene just because the dialogue in that makes me very, very uncomfortable. And honestly, I don't think it added much except for the precursor kind of things showing his mom on the white horse. Now, of course, when we hear Loomis talking about Michael being dead, we see shots of Michael kind of roaming the countryside. It's honestly very peaceful. And this is where we're introduced to Hobo Myers, who has been spending the last two years being a hobo. Now, Michael proceeds to get his ass absolutely handed to him by some rednecks because he's trespassing. You stupid fuck! I'm talking to you! What is this son of a bitch? Get a little taste of that here. <laughs> And they kick his fucking ass. And then, after he gets his ass beat, Michael decides to put on his mask and just unleash hell on them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I get, you know, the whole kind of symbolic thing about this mask. However, I don't think Michael should have been taken down as easily as he was, even if it was only for a few minutes. It just seemed to really humanize him. And I don't think that, that really helped the movie in any way. But honestly, it's probably one of the more normal things that happened in this movie. Okay, so let's talk about the rest of the movie. And I'm gonna kind of do this quickly. So, of course, Michael comes back and Annie gets brutally fucking murdered by Michael. So, Lori and her two friends that she works with go to a Halloween party. Um, it's pretty weird. They get really fucked up because Lori's kind of having a meltdown. And the one friend gets murdered by Michael after making a dumb water sports joke. And honestly, I hope that's the reason that she got murdered. They go back to Sheriff Brackett's house, where Lori ends up finding Annie after she has been pretty much killed by Michael. She ends up dying in Lori's arms, and as it turns out, Michael's still there. So Michael takes care of Lori's other friend, and leaving her without Annie. Now, Michael ends up getting his hands on Lori finally and takes her to a cabin now in this cabin you see young Michael and you see Deborah Myers and Lori seeing all of this too so it's definitely some psychological thing I guess they're trying to say that it's something in the family um, overall I honestly don't know what the fuck is going on at this point shit's getting weird um, not that it hasn't already been weird but, I mean, this movie is full of just weird shit, okay? I mean, you have a cow that apparently destroys a fucking car. 
You have Michael hallucinating like he's on fucking shrooms, seeing his dead mother on a white horse. You got his little sister that was adopted that somehow he knows is his little sister that he hasn't seen since she was a fucking baby. And of course she's tripping balls on shrooms as well. You've got Lori finding out that she is the little sister and absolutely melting down about it even though it really doesn't change much about her life because I mean her parents are fucking dead now so big whoop and now you just have this weird shit where Michael's pretty much refusing to kill her and of course the cops surround the fucking cabin shag shed whatever the fuck this thing is and they're trying to get a shot so and then something ends up happening Michael ends up falling onto these fucking spike things some sort of farm equipment anyway Michael ends up fucking dead and Lori comes out wearing the mask and it's just really fucking weird and I don't know if it's all completely Rob's fault or if it's the Rob and the studio's fault or if it's just the studio's fault I'm not really sure but this movie was fucking horrible now the next movie I think I'm going to talk about is probably going to be Halloween 2018 followed by Halloween Kills and then Halloween Ends, unfortunately. Um, I've only seen Halloween Ends one time because I absolutely hate that movie and I think that that is one of the only movies that I would say is worse than Halloween 2 from 2009. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put myself through torture just to make a video about it so I hope you guys enjoy the next upcoming videos and if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, tell me what you think, and if you don't mind, share this around. I'm trying to kind of get this started, and I'm having a lot of fun making these, so uh, definitely share it, and uh, give a subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Ghosty Rose.